The Terminator series is one that is not only close to my heart, but for a lot of other folks, it's close to their hearts as well. Whenever a joke about artificial intelligence taking over the world pops up, oftentimes I hear the word Skynet in relation to the joke. The idea of an AI becoming self-aware, viewing humanity as a threat to its existence, and launching humanity's own nuclear weapons against itself is a concept that I find terrifying, yet also very intriguing. To give you an idea on my relation to this series, I have watched the iconic Terminator and the even more iconic Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which is my personal favorite film in the franchise if you're curious. I've also watched Terminator 3, and while it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, I was still pretty disappointed with it, and I can easily see why some people go as far as to hate on this movie. I've also seen Terminator Genesis, which... Uh, 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 uh. As for the other films, I haven't seen any of them, and based on their reception, I don't plan on it. <laughs> With a franchise that's this beloved by fans, it was only natural that video games would spawn from it to varying degrees of success. And to tell you the truth, I haven't played many of those games. Alongside the Terminator Salvation arcade game that you can only find at arcades, the only other Terminator video game that I had played until recently was the Terminator Salvation video game for consoles, which... I didn't even make it to the end of that game, I got so bored with it. And honestly, I haven't been keeping up to date with the franchise anymore. I had seen the two iconic films, the good Terminator games up until recently were released for consoles that are hard to get nowadays, and the games that came out for it during this time were at best slightly above average. However, in 2019, a new Terminator game was released, and it was stated to be a mediocre or just flat out bad game right off the bat, considering who the developer behind it was. To give a point of reference, these were the same folks who made that awful arcade shooter Rambo the video game. John! 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 No! It's no! 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 Rambo the video game! Rambo! 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 I'm losing it. He's a man, not a god! Come on, comrade! He's a man, not a god! Come on, comrade! He's a man, not a god! He's a man, not a god! So to have these developers messing around with the Terminator franchise, if it didn't demoralize, it at the very least casted a massive shadow of doubt over the game's success. I still remember when I first saw that trailer. I do have to admit, part of me was actually pretty excited about this game. However, when the excitement from the trailer passed, I did grow concerned. That's when I grew skeptical considering Taeon's history up to that point, and I did not pre-order the game. It would be about two months or so before the game re-entered my mind, and upon that happening, I went to look at the reviews. Critics were generally mixed on the game, but players seemed to adore and love it. As someone who doesn't rely on critic scores anymore, I was more focused on the player score. Seeing that players who play this game seemed to love it so much got me curious, and seeing that it wasn't on rails, but rather a true first-person shooter where you have full control over your character, and seeing such things as the Terminators themselves, the red and purple lasers, you know, the little... This is ter... What? That's a terrible impression of a plasma rifle, dude. What are you doing? The destroyed world and more. I did end up buying it eventually. And in the end, I'm quite glad I did. When first starting up this game, having seen the player review scores and the clips of the gameplay, I did have slightly higher expectations than one may have assumed. 
Granted, I wasn't expecting anything top quality or AAA standards, but at least I knew it wasn't going to be anything like Rambo. And I do have to admit, when I got to that main menu and heard this game's take on the Terminator theme, I got goosebumps. A good first impression if I do say so myself. Now we have a lot to talk about in this review, primarily the gameplay, so let's get started with that first. When I first bought Terminator Resistance, I thought it was going to be something similar to a linear Call of Duty-like campaign kind of game, which would have been cool in my opinion. But what we got here was interesting, and considering the grand scheme of things, I think it works out to the game's benefit quite well. Rather than being linear, the majority of Terminator Resistance's gameplay is in sandbox environments where you have the freedom to explore the map however you please. Similar to games like Fallout, for example. As you explore these sandboxes, you of course have your objectives that need to be completed in order to progress through the story, as well as plenty of Terminators to shoot. Enemies ranging from simple spider scouts, to aerial drones, to spider tanks, to the well-known Terminators such as the T-800 come into play here and in my opinion, the game balances these Terminators quite well. Naturally, since you start with lower tier weapons, you'll have easier enemies to fight. Basically, enemies that can be taken down with bullet weapons. As you progress, you get access to better weapons and are able to take on the bigger and more lethal Terminator units. This game manages to not be cheap in this regard with only having you see a T-800 when you grab your first plasma rifle in the game. You actually get to interact with these things before you have weapons to defend yourself with which provides truly intense gameplay, where there are moments where your weapons will do jack sh** against the army of T-800s marching your way, and the only thing you can do is hide and pray that they don't find you. The hospital in particular, oh my gosh. This makes these Terminators much more menacing, and all the more satisfying to shoot when you've acquired the necessary weaponry. Speaking of weapons, what do we have in this game? We actually have a surprisingly high amount of weapons to choose from. You have your standard pistol, SMG, assault rifle, and shotgun, but later in the game is when you get access to the plasma weapons, which have red, generation 1, and violet, generation 2, versions to them. It is a bit disappointing that there is no in-depth weapon customization in this game, I will admit. The only sort of customization here is when you're able to use Skynet chips to boost a plasma weapon stats. No scopes, aside from a scoped variant of a plasma weapon, camos, silencers, grenade launchers, nothing like that. Had there been attachments in this game, I feel it would have expanded the combat a bit more. However, what we are given here is done quite well, I will say that much. In this game, there are also elements that fall in line with the Fallout-esque style of game here. Things such as scavenging for items and currency, crafting items, buying and selling items, lockpicking, which is an exact replica of how the lockpicking works in Fallout, and more are all included in this game. There are even side quests that you can complete to earn additional XP and other helpful items after you talk with some of the characters that you interact with along your journey. Okay, I've mentioned this a couple of times now, so I'll get to it now. What's the progression system like for this game? It's basic, but it gets the job done. As you eliminate Terminators, perform various actions, and complete missions, you can earn XP that has you level up. 
With each promotion, you get a skill point, which bumps up to two skill points per rank up later in the game, where you're able to spend it on things such as increased stealth, more room in your inventory, access to better weapons, better lockpicking skills, increased damage resistance, etc. in a fairly generic upgrade tree, but again, it gets the job done. These unlocks are basically required for you to make any serious progress in this game, so as soon as you rank up, spend those points. How are the enemies in this game? In my opinion, the Terminators themselves are a great combination of not impossibly difficult, but also not too easy either. Especially towards the start of the game, you have to be more careful with how you pick your fights. You can't just go charging headfirst into a spider tank, because it'll at the very least cost you a medkit or two if you survive. Towards the halfway point of the game, even when you have access to plasma weapons at this point, you still have to be careful. These aren't weapons that can instantly down these Terminators, aside from the sniper rifle, but even then you have to have the necessary skill to perform those headshots, and if you're careless, you'll end up having far more trouble than you would think. Towards the end of the game is when we get into the overpowered territory where you're basically able to one-shot these Terminators or eliminate them before they have a chance to react, but by this point, being overpowered is well earned given the struggles you would have to go through for the beginning and middle of the game. Even then though, you should err on the side of caution. I've seen people complain that the game is too easy, and while I can see where the complaints are coming from, I feel as if one should play on either hard or extreme difficulty to try and see what Terminator Resistance was going for in this department here. What about outside of combat? Outside of combat, you're able to do various things before stepping outside to go on to the next mission. Primarily, you can and will need to talk with other characters during this time. The conversations you have with them can actually be quite neat, especially when they talk about their backstory lot of character. The question is, where do we go from here? Do you remember Judgment Day? I do. That's right. I'm that old. My memory ain't as good as it used to be. However, there are some images that stand out in my mind. My brother Tucker hitting on this lady guard or people covered in mud. But for the life of me, I can't remember the name of that band. You have a brother. My, I did. Older brother. Well, he was a ladies' man. We didn't have tickets to the concert, but he knew how to charm a lady. She let us in. Well, him. I tagged along like I always did. Yeah, it was one of those outdoor festivals. When we got in, we decided to climb this metal tower to get a better view of the stage, you know, so... As we're watching this band play their hearts out, we see a burst of bright, ugly light. I went blind for a while. What was it? Took me a while to understand what I was looking at. The atomic mushroom cloud wasn't something we were ever supposed to see. With my bloodshot eyes, the only other thing I could see clearly was uh, people below me being crushed tower we were clinging on to started shaking. I finally gave in after the shockwave from the explosion. I closed my eyes and it started falling onto the people below. Oh. Oh. What am I thinking of? I'm usually a lighthearted guy. Why don't we talk about something more positive? Oh, God, I remember the name of that band now. It was captured by robots. Heck, even their perception of you can change depending on how you respond or whether you do something for them or not. It's nothing too complicated, but it didn't have to be. And the voice acting here is, for the most part, pretty good. There are a few moments where characters are voiced worse than others in the occasional cringy line or two, but the majority of Terminator Resistance's voice acting is pretty good. Other things outside of combat you can do are craft items before you leave, buy and sell items, and take in the atmosphere of the whole setting. Especially towards the latter half of the game, which I'll get to in a bit here. Okay, so that's all the good things about Terminator Resistance's gameplay. What about the bad? Well, before I get to the bad, there is one thing that I'm going to deem as undecided. Throughout the entire game, you're given these X-ray goggles that allow you to see through walls or have better visibility on enemies during nighttime or otherwise rough conditions. You're unable to sprint and you cannot fire weapons when you have these goggles activated. Doing either of those will automatically disable those goggles. 
I will admit, it is nice to be able to pop these goggles on and see that I'm about to walk into a silverfish trap or use them as a legalized wall hacking tool. But the negative aspect of this is that it can sometimes ruin the atmosphere of a given setting when you're able to see them at all times. I feel as if this was added in an attempt to eliminate as many cheap encounters as possible, but it's also a little too easy to constantly know where your enemies are at all times. Don't get me wrong, being required to turn them off when you want to sprint or shoot does help, and it's not like using these will automatically equal victory, but I can see how it can eliminate some of the tension in the game. Alright, now on to the flat out bad things about this game. Really, it just comes down to cheap encounters with enemies. For instance, when you fight against a T-47, Skynet's version of Big Chungus, after you get it down to about half health or so, it'll deploy these rocket pods. At a first glance, it seems like no big deal. Just get behind something sturdy when the sound indicator of the missile targeting is heard, let the rockets hit, continue the attack. The only problem is that these rockets are wildly inconsistent. You can be behind a full truck trailer, completely in cover, and still get killed. You could be out in the open running, and you can survive. You can be far away from the T-47, and that thing will long range snipe you with rockets. Basically, just keep shooting at it, get behind something that looks sturdy, and pray to the RNG gods that this time the T-47's missiles are loaded with confetti instead of lethal explosive power. The other cheap instance is when you get into the true boss fight of the game against the Skynet Infiltrator unit. When you get to this point in the game, the Infiltrator has a PTSD attack from having Battlefield 1 grenade spam.exe loaded into its brain, and so he decides to start spitting out grenades like it's operations on Monte Grappa where you have to capture the mountain gun bunker. What makes this encounter cheap is 1. How often he uses the attack. 2. No clear indication of him preparing for the attack because it's nighttime and the flare from the fire is all bright and stuff. And 3. The blast radius for these grenades are quite large. It wouldn't be a negative if this bot didn't use it constantly, and if there was a more clear way of alerting the player so they could run away instead of just leaving them in the dark about it. Other than those two things, there aren't any serious flaws to the gameplay. On the audio and visual front, for the visuals, it's a bit of a mixed bag. This game runs on the Unreal 4 engine, but it does not look the part. However, we do have to take into account the context that this game was made under. Having a lower budget and fewer staff compared to other bigger titles meant the devs here had less to work with, and they produced what they could. Which, don't get me wrong, what they produced here is still good. It's not like garbage or anything, but it's definitely not what comes to mind when I immediately think of Unreal 4, like top-of-the-line gear. However, for the majority of Terminator Resistance, the graphics are still pretty good. Nothing spectacular, but the majority of the time, it doesn't hurt the eyes. M most of the time. On the audio front, this is an area where the game succeeds with flying colors. The sound effects for the regular weapons firing are good, the plasma weapon sounds are amazing, pretty much spot on to the films, explosions are good, the whole audio library for this game is good. However, the soundtrack? Hoo hoo baby, it is on another level! As someone who loves video game soundtracks, as I stated before, I got goosebumps when listening to the main menu music. The tracks are calm in nature when not in the field or in combat play out nicely, but the moments when the action is intense is when the game's soundtrack truly shines. Now, what about the story of the game? How is that? Pretty darn good, actually, I must admit. I won't go over the story too in-depth here, but just let me say that for a series that deals with time travel and now a series that deals with continuity about characters being alive or dead, it handles the story quite well. To give a quick summary, you play as Private Jacob Rivers, a soldier who is a part of the now deceased Pacific Division after a Skynet prototype infiltrated unit makes its way inside and destroys everything and everyone. It's now his mission to get the message to Commander Baron, the leader of another division, to inform her about what had happened. Throughout this journey, you find yourself meeting up with other survivors, fighting for survival in the post-nuclear war Los Angeles, and later in the game, you join Commander Baron's division, and you get to have an underground bunker similar to the one in the films being your place of refuge. From this point on, it's up to you and the other members of the Resistance to take the fight to Skynet to finally win this war. There are plenty of references to the first two films that will have folks grinning with joy upon catching them. 
it's through these references that we're able to see that this game was made by people who clearly love the Terminator series and wanted to make the best game about it as possible given their limitations as a smaller studio. And there's also a reference that shows that the developers can poke a little fun at themselves, which is nice. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. He's a man, not a god. The highlight of this game's story is when we get to the end, where the time displacement equipment, the time traveling device, is found, and the assault for it begins. This part gave me chills because it includes everything. This is the biggest reference to the films just ever in this game. John Connor, Connor making his way outside of the bunker with troops saluting him, placing you in charge of leading the assault on Skynet's TDE. Constant action, the game's beautiful soundtrack in the background, it is just amazing! Let me tell you that I had a super large grin on my face when I first played this final level. You know what, in fact, in fact, let me play just a couple of minutes of this final level for you to show you what I'm talking about. Commander. Commander. Defense grid commander. Good. That HK will accompany you. Proceed forward. Remember, this is not over yet. Check your fire. That tank is ours. This was just further confirmation that this game was made by people who love and appreciate the Terminator franchise. So another thing I want to discuss is what the whole deal behind the major split between critics versus player reviews are about. As someone who has played this game and is giving a review on it, I think it comes down to taking into account for context. Knowing the context that these were the folks that made the Rambo video game, knowing that they had a small budget and team, knowing that they truly loved the Terminator franchise and wanted to make the best game possible for it, and knowing that the Terminator games before it have for the most part been either mediocre or flat out bad, makes Terminator Resistance stand out among the crowd. Don't get me wrong, it's not a triple A title, it's nowhere near game of the year status, but at the same time, Terminator Resistance's success cannot be understated. And this is another thing that I love and appreciate about this game. Now, this is going to sound corny, admittedly, but this is a representation of a redemption arc. This is one of those top 10 anime plot twists kinds of games. 
think about it. Taeyeon's first game was an awful arcade on-rail shooter with Rambo the Video Game. Critically panned by both critics and players alike, their first game was a complete and utter disaster. Their first impression to the gaming community was that they would just take movie franchises and make trashy games out of them. The developers took their loss, and instead of throwing in the towel or continuing to make cheap cash grab games, they picked themselves up and worked with what they had to make a Terminator game. This Terminator game is a major improvement on so many levels, and is what brought Taeyeon into the spotlight once again. However, rather than being mocked and laughed at, this time the players are throwing the roses and cheering the devs' praises. These folks worked with what they had to create a Terminator game that is now considered by many to be among the best, and I can agree with that statement. Heck, for a lot of people, this gave them their Terminator 3. And after having seen Terminator 3 for a point of reference, I must admit, this game left me a lot more satisfied with its conclusion. Terminator Resistance is a game that I highly, highly, highly encourage that you give a shot if you have not already. Yeah, it may not be something like Call of Duty or Battlefield. Yes, it may not be AAA status, but it is its own special charm, its own diamond in the rough. I beg of you, if you are a fan of first-person shooters and you like the Fallout style of gameplay, where you do exploration, talking with other characters and everything else, and you're a fan of the Terminator franchise, please give this game a shot, I beg of you. A Terminator game where the source material is respected, its gameplay is fun, and in general, it stands as a testament to what a game development company can do when they have the right attitude when making a game. And just on the off chance that anyone from Taeyeon is watching this, let me tell you this. You and everyone else who made this game, you and everyone else there in that studio, you all ought to be friggin' proud of what you accomplished with this game. It's not many times that people are able to get second chances, especially in the video game market. You took that second chance and used it to create a great game that I personally believe needs more recognition. If this is the kind of game that you all are able to put together with the team and budget that you have, I can only imagine what kind of game you all can make when you have more staff, a bigger budget, and the same love and passion into that project that you had for this one. I will say this again. You ought to be freaking proud of what you accomplished here, and I look forward to seeing what game you all come up with next. And with that being said, everyone, that brings us to the end of this video. What do you think of Terminator Resistance? Do you love it the same way that I do? Do you think it's okay? Do you hate it for one reason or another? Man, let's get a discussion going in the comments. Let's see what we all think about this game. As you can probably tell from this video, I personally love it for what it is, but that's just my opinion. That's one man's take. With that all being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and if you really want to, you can hit that subscribe button and be sure to click that bell icon to receive all notifications for future uploads. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and peace out, everyone.